day, Acute Angels! Welcome to a new learning episode. I am Sir Joshua Santos, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module or your math book. Pen and paper to write your answer as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. You may also comment or ask questions at the comment section. In this lesson, I will be guiding you in this week 6 lesson for the third quarter of grade 8 mathematics. At the end of this lesson, you were expected to prove two triangles are congruent. In the previous episode, you have learned about solving corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And today, we will discuss on how to prove two triangles are congruent. Before we proceed to our discussion, let's have a review first on our previous lesson about postulates on triangle congruence. On this activity, try to guess what postulate is being used based on the illustration. Let's have number one. Try to guess what postulate is being used. Notice that the triangles have markings on their sides. It indicates that each part of the triangle with the same markings on the other triangle is congruent. In this illustration, side 1 has the same markings on the other triangle. That means they are congruent. Even the other two sides have the same markings. That means all sides of first triangle has corresponding parts on the other triangle. So the postulates we use on this one is SSS congruence postulate that says if three sides of a triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Very good. Next, try to guess what postulate is being used. I think you know the answer. But first, let's identify their congruent parts to know what postulate is being used. First, one of their side has marked, which means they are congruent. Next, not only the side, but also one of their angles has marked, which means they are congruent also. But we have a missing part. On these two triangles, they have only two markings. At least we need three corresponding parts to say if it is an SSS, SAS, or ASA. Where is the other one? Look at the triangles carefully. They share the same sign. We can use the term reflexive property which means equal to itself. So we can say that the third corresponding parts we are looking for is this side. Based on the clue we have, the answer is SAS congruence postulates that states that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of one another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. If you have the same answer, then you are correct. And last one, Try to guess what postulate is being used. I think you are confused with your answer because we have the same problem with the previous question. We have only two congruent parts. We have only one angle and one side with markings. So where is the other one? Notice this part. They call it vertical angles. When we say vertical angles, these angles are opposite to each other and they are congruent angles. So now you know the vertical angles. It is pretty obvious that even without a mark on these angles, they are considered congruent. So the postulate we use on this figure is ASA congruence postulate that stated if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent in the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. 
Good job, grade 8 learners. I think you are now familiar with the postulates on triangle congruence. And now it looks like you are ready to learn our new lesson. We review those postulates because they are very useful in proving triangles congruent. When proving the congruency of two triangles, we need to find evidences such as these two triangles have the same shape, same size, or even same sides or same angles. Always remember when triangles are congruent, six facts are always true. Their corresponding sides are congruent and their corresponding angles are also congruent. Look at these figures, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Based on the markings, the corresponding sides are congruent. Side AB is congruent to side DF. Side BC is congruent to side EF. And side CA is congruent to side FB. The corresponding angles are also congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle B. And angle B is congruent to angle E. And last one, angle C is congruent to angle F. And these are the six facts of congruent triangles. Three corresponding sides are congruent and three corresponding angles are congruent. The good news is that when proving triangles congruent, it is not necessary to prove all six facts to show congruency. There are certain ordered combinations of these facts that are sufficient to prove triangles congruent. These combinations guarantee that, given these facts, it will be possible to draw triangles which will take on only one shape, thus ensuring congruency. There are following ordered combinations of the congruent triangle facts that will be sufficient to prove triangles congruent. And these are the triangle congruence postulates, SSS, SAS, and ASA. These postulates need only three corresponding parts with certain ordered combination. Once triangles are proven congruent, we can say that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or we call it CPCPC. Let's have some examples on proving triangles congruent. For number one, prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. First, Observe the two triangles and look for a hint. Notice that they have markings that indicate congruency. First, side AB has the same marks on side BE. That means they are congruent. Next, the other side AC and side DF have the same marks also, which means they are congruent. We have also angles with the same markings angle A and angle B. Do you remember what I said earlier? We only need to find at least three corresponding parts to say that these two triangles are congruent. Notice the ordered combination of the given facts. Look at the position of angle A and angle D. They serve as the included angle of the given sides. It is clearly stated that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This example is supported by SAS congruence postulates. Therefore, we can now conclude that triangle ABC and triangle DEF are congruent. Next example. Prove triangle MAT is congruent to triangle MHT. Again, observe the two triangles. First, look for the markings. They have congruent sides. Side MA is congruent to side MH. So we found one. And then, side AD is congruent to side HD for the second side. Now we are looking for the third but we don't have another markings. Just observe the two triangles. It's just like the previous examples. These two triangles share the same side, which is side MT or TM. It's the same. So, 
three corresponding sides are congruent. It is clearly stated that if three sides of a triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This example is supported by SSS congruence postulates. Therefore, we can now conclude that triangle MAT is congruent to the triangle MHT. Let's proceed to another example. Prove triangle FUN is congruent to triangle BAY. We are just following the same method. First, observe the two triangles and look for the markings. Now, we found only two, but do not worry. If you look carefully to the two triangles, they are right triangles. And a right triangle is a triangle with right angles. That means even without a mark, these angles are right angles and they are congruent. Then next, the corresponding parts with markings are Side UN is congruent to side AY. And angle N is congruent to angle Y. Now, notice the ordered combination of the given facts. Look at the position of side UN and side AY. They serve as the included side of the given angles. It is clearly stated that if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This example is supported by ASA congruence postulates. Therefore, we can now conclude that triangle FUN is congruent to triangle DE. Aside from SSS, SAS, and ASA congruence postulates, we can also use other theorems in proving two triangles are congruent on some special cases. These are AAS or SAA theorem and HL theorem. Let's start with AAS or SAA theorem. If two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This is an extension of ASA congruence postulate. In ASA, since you know two sets of angles are congruent, you automatically know the third sets are also congruent since there are 180 degrees in each triangle. To better understand this theorem, let's have an example. Prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Using the given facts, first, angle A and angle X are congruent. Next, angle B and angle Y are also congruent. And the third one, Side BC is congruent to side YC. The difference of AAS or SAA theorem to other postulates, its corresponding side is non-included side. But like what I said, there are some triangles with special cases. Even though the sides are non-included, we can automatically know the third missing angle since there are 180 degrees in each triangle. We can use ASA congruence postulate to support our reasoning in AES or SAA theorem. So when you have two angles and non-included side of one triangle which are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This example is supported by AES or SAA theorem. Therefore, we can now conclude that the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Now let's have HL theorem. If the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the corresponding hypotenuse and leg of another, then the two triangles are congruent. This one is exclusive only for right triangles because of the word hypotenuse and leg because they are part of it. To better understand this theorem, let's have an example. Prove triangle RUN congruent to triangle HOP. Let's observe the two triangles. First, they are right triangles because of the symbol of the angle. Next, side RN, which is the hypotenuse of the first triangle, is congruent to its corresponding side, which is the side HP. And last one, one of the leg, side UN, 
as a mark also and congruent to the other side, which is the side OP. It is clearly stated if the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the corresponding hypotenuse and leg of another, then the two triangles are congruent. This example is supported by HL theorem. Therefore, we can now conclude that triangle RUN is congruent to triangle HOP. At some cases, to avoid mistakes and confusion, there are also methods that do not prove triangles congruent. In this example, let's try to prove triangle YOU is congruent to triangle SHE. Let's observe first. Their corresponding angles are congruent, but the problem is their corresponding sides are not congruent. The first triangle is smaller than the second one. This is an example of AAA theorem. It will show that the triangles are the same shape, but it will not show that the triangles are the same size. I will not recommend to use this method to prove triangles congruent. It may give you similar triangles, but not congruent. Next, we have SSA or AESS theorem. We already used this a while ago in HL theorem. In some cases, like right triangles, we can use it to prove triangles congruent, and it is acceptable. But what if we have other triangles like acute triangles, obtuse triangles, and the other triangles? It is not applicable and advisable to use it since it cannot guarantee that the shapes of the triangles formed will always be the same. This method allows for the possibility of creating triangles of various shapes or even no triangles at all. If you encounter this, you can write cannot be proven. If you have question regarding our lesson for today, you can write your question on the comment section or feel free to ask your subject teacher. Now, let us answer an activity to check your progress. You can write your answer in your mathematics note. Here's the instruction. For test A, for each pair of triangles, state the postulate or theorem that can be used to conclude that the triangles are congruent. For test B, prove that the triangles are congruent. State the postulate or theorem that can be used to support your answer. Right can't be proven if the triangles can be proven using the valid postulates or theorems. For number one, prove triangle GRC is congruent to triangle ARE. For number two, prove triangle DAB is congruent to triangle BCD. And for number three, prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ONM. And that's all. You did a great job today. But before we end our lesson for today, I just want to share you a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Be congruent, be authentic, and be your true self. Again, thank you for watching and I hope you've learned something about this lesson. Have a good week. God bless you.